Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard Foreign Strategies. Prepare for takeoff. So they're all going to be a uh, golf course facing? Um, yeah, so there's a, I'll, I'll show you the map right now. We're about to see a little presentation so y'all can have like a better idea of exactly where we are. Originally, I was introduced to real estate since I was in Texas because my friends and members that I knew from uh, organizations would already start flipping houses. But when I came to Playa del Carmen and I saw the, the volatility of the properties already being bought, already being sold, already the, the stuff that's already constructed, and the new projects, they both have a lot of uh, possibilities in general. So real estate here is, I think, one of the major businesses, um, aside from the tourism. Of course, the tourism, the traveling, the, all the adventures out there, the ruins. But it's beautiful. You get, you get everything you would get. I would compare it to, I would say it's like a Miami, but a, a small baby Miami. You know, that's what I compare it to. Playing the government. Is there a big difference in working in real estate here versus Texas? Yes, I mean, I like, I personally love the Caribbean, and I think that's one of the things that I can't get away from. So, I mean, the from the construction to the architects, to the finishes, to the trees that can, like, you know, that you choose which one stays and which one doesn't. I think that all has everything to do on, on why I want to stay here and why I want to continue here. So what would you say to the person, let's say the American that wants to invest in a place like Mexico, but is scared to invest in Mexico? I would say don't be scared. First of all, you have to start coming out here knowing what's out here because if you're afraid of the unknown, how are you ever going to get over your fear? So I think like starting from zero in a place where you have never been and building a brand new community for yourself is the best thing you can do because with after the pandemic we, we see how valuable open spaces are and we see how valuable nature is and how important it is to coexist with it so that's one thing that we emphasize a lot in the Riviera Maya in general that we are in the jungle like we are still in the jungle where the jungle meets the ocean like what other combination can you ask for? So typically what's your clients? Are they investing in property here to live in it? Or are they investing in order to get out or sell it? I think they do both. I have both. I have the family that already wants to raise their kids here and they want to put their kids in school here and they want to or even homeschooling but do it here. Um, and then I also have the client that is like I want to have that place where I can land in time but I also make money while I'm sleeping. Okay, so just a mixture, both. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's awesome. And with both of them, they're both livable, as well as it's a lot of game right. potentially out there to pick. So, great place definitely. to be. I think you made a good choice. Yes, I definitely yes. Made the returns of investments are definitely good percentages out here, and it's guaranteed for sure. Like, you're you're always gonna have tourists here. We have a uh, in Quintana Roo, we already have three million uh, tourists per year. Three million. Mm -hmm. uh, and they have grown after the pandemic. The numbers have grown. So what was it before the pandemic? Before the pandemic, it was three. Right now, I think we're doing like four. I haven't even looked wow. at the numbers in these couple months, but Airbnb rates are renting 50% higher, 50% higher uh, occupancy in Airbnb than last year.
couple of difficulties, but we are now walking to the architectural design. And where we were talking about is that during the pandemic, you would think, oh, there's less sales out here, like people aren't coming. But I, I did see a lot of purchases from Canadian uh, citizens mm -hmm. because in, Can in Canada currently the the COVID restrictions are so so like strict and they just don't have a life. I think they have a curfew now and all this. So people decided to come for a week. They stayed two weeks, then they they switched to three months, and now they're purchasing. So the sales have increased. The pandemic, a lot of places they're affected negatively, but this is one of the places where you can still find your freedom. You can connect with nature. You can relax. You can come co-work. You can be a digital nomad. You can do whatever you like out here. That's true. I did see a lot of people migrate to Mexico, and then after a while. I felt like Mexico became America. I didn't even see a lot of, uh, like, not too many Mexicans around, particularly in Playa de Carmen. Playa de Carmen, yes. Playa yeah. de Carmen is uh, definitely a diversity-filled city, I would say, because of the development of where it's at. So we can see Tulum going towards that direction, mm -hmm. but Tulum, I feel like, will always be more open and more jungle vibes because of the, the layout of the, the, the town, the city that it's becoming now. Okay. What's your background? Were you, were you, uh, you're Mexican, right? I'm full Mexican, but I was raised in Texas. And but yes, full, full Mexican, full blood. Okay, so how did you end up at Playa de Carmen? So, um, one of my friends was actually purchasing land out here, and the same residential where Tarek bought his land mm -hmm. and she told me that uh, if I could come with her to do like some paperwork and some stuff that she needed to do and I was like yes like I've never been there and I'm Mexican and this is crazy like I only know the Caribbean from Puerto Rico and other places but never been so I fell in love with Playa. You said Tulum is second right for what for investment or second for just like development, development. progress. Progress. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. so and fly uh, the development at a fast rate in Tulum? Well, I think Playa currently is a maybe twenty year old city. Yeah. Tulum is less than ten years. Mm -hmm. So that's it's kind of like the vision of you can what well, you can kind of expect. Maybe not the same because the, the structure is so different in Tulum. But in Playa, definitely, you saw how everything started, you know, becoming walking distance, paved community where you need a bike or a moped, but you don't really rely on a car. I mean, a car is kind of like optional. So price per square foot or square meter, is it going to be more expensive in Playa or Tulum? It depends on where you are because there are premium areas. And right now in Playa del Carmen, we're about three thousand two hundred dollars per per square meter because we go by meters so Tulum is cheaper for land I would say right now but it all depends on what you're looking for if you want a turnkey place where you can start Airbnb there's even uh, residentials that offer a free year of administration through Airbnb okay. so now there's also um, partnerships with those type of companies Okay. Okay. So it just depends on what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. But typically speaking, Tulum is going to be cheaper on the square meter side of things. Uh, since I don't know. More developed. I don't know because Tulum is is become it's picking up so fast, and the fact that we're going to have the first mall out there soon that might just raise the prices. I mean, I have seen a lot of like growth in the prices in just a few months so it's i think it's going at a faster speed and price wise okay so what would you say the biggest difference when it comes to like purchasing property here versus like the states like is there anything that someone should know right off the, the only thing that's the most important is knowing that you would have to go through a bank trust so because you are a citizen from another country there was a law back in the day when they try to avoid the the territorial uh, country. So they did this law where you couldn't purchase if you weren't a citizen within 50 kilometers of the shore. But now we have been dealing with real estate for years and the process that they go through is you just put everything under your name but under a bank. So that is your backup. 
exactly. So that's what it if is. anything happens, it goes to the bank first. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, okay. The T Bob was looking distraught because I did like a, <laughs> a slit your throat sign <laughs> yeah, no, no. and I didn't know how to like tell him like ah, you guys okay, you guys so can cut. No, well I appreciate you taking me to how do you pronounce this again? Corazon. Corazon today was amazing. Absolutely beautiful place. Uh, you know a lot. Great at what you do and I look forward to working with you more in the future. Okay. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Boom. Boom. Boom.